Welcome back guys to Oxygen Not Included and today I'm going to answer a question I thought I would have answered a long time ago and that is how much water can a tile hold if a tile can't hold water and what I have here is a benchmark test so I'm going to be exploring two separate things and one is what are the water dynamics how does that calculate inside of the side of Oxygen Not Included on a simplistic standpoint for example is it simply how much water is stacked vertically or is it a volume question like we have over here you know this is very wide and this is very tall. So we're going to see at what point this stuff starts to fail. We're also going to look into materials. And this is in response to a comment that was left on my last video, which was also the thing that sparked this video in the first place, <laughs> which was the Megabase Challenge Episode 1, where I started to build a a tank where I'm going to store the polluted water. Very important. You're going to want to do that probably in every base that you ever make. So... Um, Jason says, airflow tiles are your best bet for containing water since they are built from metals rather than rocks. So that right there introduces some interesting ideas. Not only can we use normal tiles, we can use, you know, air tiles. And I wonder if doors work. Are we just going to blow up the game when we start to use doors? You can lay them sideways. I don't know, but we're going to find out. All right, so let's start this off at the very beginning here. What I have is obsidian. And then on top of that, I have 10 columns or 10 tiles of water. And that's what I should have. So you can see that the water right there, meaning that I should have 10,000 kilograms worth of water on top of this tile down here. And at this point, none of these are breaking. So I think right off the bat here, I'm, what I'm expecting to see, as far as my results, is that it's going to be after a certain height, this tile down here will no longer be able to withstand. So let's go ahead and take this up to the next level, and we'll try to do 11. Okay, so let's go ahead and paint in 11. So that's going to be one more, and that'll be right there. And we can see here that nothing is breaking. So let's take it up a notch. Go to 12. Aha! We're starting to see a little bit of damage over here at 12. Let me go ahead and just make the rest of these and see if all the damage happens in the exact same time. At the exact same time. Okay, so you can see that the water levels here are the exact same all the way across the board. And you're getting pressure damage, and that pressure damage is identical. It's across the bottom in each location here. So yeah, see how that all came in there at the exact same time? So that right there tells me exactly how this game is calculating water pressure. If it is just over the limit, it's going to start blowing out the bottom. However, I think there's another way we can also kind of work on this. Um, if we were to increase the water here a little bit more suddenly to more than it can take beyond that, what we should see is damage should happen all the way around here. So anything that is below 12, we should see some damage that's right here. Start cascading. So this is where I start to chart things. All right, so for my next test, I'm just gonna have these, I guess at this point, we're gonna just gonna call them vials, right? Vials of different material. And then I'm going to paint in water above that to see at what point do they fail. Okay, so obsidian over here should be able to withstand 11 tiles. 14? Wow, granite is strong. Which I guess makes sense, right? <laughs> it's granite after all. 15. Ooh, man. 16? Yeah. Ooh, man. All right, so this is this is the problem that I ran into is that I must have been using sedimentary rock, which is, you know, kind of just something that's around, no big deal. So I use it. But if I use that for a liquid chamber, look at that. It's going to break <laughs> well before I get any decent amount of volume of water on top of it. Now, for those of us that like to use the Abyss Light, let's see how that works. Ooh, who's going to win this battle? Abyss Light or Granite? Oh, ho, ho, ho. Holding strong at 16. Ooh, can we do 17? Hmm? Winner, winner, chicken dinner! The best of the tiles. What magic material is this stuff? <laughs> well, I made it up to 20, so I'm, I can't make my test any taller. I gotta 
keep going. All right, how about 21? 22. I mean, this is the best material in the world. Oh, there it is. 22. That's the limit. Nope, never mind. Maybe a little bit more. Oh, I don't think it went that high. All right, so for round one of just normal tiles here, what we have here is obsidian in at 11, igneous rock at 11, granite up at 16, the sedimentary rock is down at pitiful three, don't make anything out of that. Sandstone is at six, and then abyssalite up there at 20. How about that? So that should give you some clear indication of what you can do with that material. Now, just to reinforce this, I am going to take this material here and make it nice and wide just to make sure that the width does not have anything to do with it. Okay, that's a lot of water. And it's going to settle down and I'll, I'll be able to paint in one more spot on top of it. <laughs> like I thought this would have exploded. Don't, wouldn't, wouldn't you think that this would explode? That's like a huge tank. It just goes to show, make it out of the right material. Okay, so just for good measure, we have to compare this to the insulated tiles because we have to cover all our bases, right? So this is obsidian and that is obsidian. So if I paint it in a little bit more, will this obsidian fail? Is it just based on the material? There is more ingredients that go into the insulated tile. Aha, that's exactly what I wanted to see. It fails. Okay, so it's just the type of material. All right, so now we're dealing with the metals. Let's go ahead and start all of these off at 20 to see if any of them are going to fail at less than our strongest rock. Now, some of this might be really useful when it comes to like steam generation and figuring out, you know, different areas and all that stuff. I don't know, it's kind of a crazy idea. <laughs> and, and let's just, for the sake of it, can we even hold water inside of doors? Like, while this stuff is running, it's a little experiment. <laughs> Pneumatic doors. Why not? See? I mean, you can rotate them, so... Ah! It doesn't work. <laughs> I've, I've got a good feeling about this one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it works. There's no reason this should not work. All right, so right off the bat, we can see that the metals are holding up to our strongest rock. So there's definitely something to that comment, by the way. So, mm, very interesting there. I'm guessing that this stuff is going to be able to hold a lot more. So let's just deconstruct everything. All right, so I got the experiment set up again. Let's go ahead and count out, let's say, 30 tiles of water. See what happens. Gosh, counting this is so annoying. All right, so here we go. I have all the different metals set up again, and then each one of these is 10 tiles of water. So I'm just going to paint in 20 into each one of these, and then we'll start going up by 10 from there and then on. At some point, something's got to break, right? So we know 20 works just fine. So let's move on to 30. Missed one. Oh, this is a pain in the butt. Come on. All right, so all of these seem to be able to withstand 30 just fine. So what about 40? Hopefully something breaks at some point here. <laughs> Man, that's impressive. Look at all that water pressure down there. It's up to 1,300, almost 1,400. Let's see, can the doors keep up with the air tiles? Eh, nothing's blowing up yet. Okay, so at this point, I'm just gonna say it. I don't know if we could even break some of these tiles with water or liquid pressure. Let's let's just find out. I'm gonna dig this about as high as it can go, and we'll see if we can break this one singular column of water with anything. All right, so it is really, really tall now. And let's just bring in all kinds of water. There we go, all the way up. 
Anything? Just kind of sweep this material up real quick. Anything? Nothing? <laughs> like, it doesn't even know what to do as far as it's, like, pressure down here. It is building up, but then it kind of freaks out. And it almost sends, like, a little bit of a shockwave back up, up and down. Now, this is supported, I guess, by the surrounding stuff around it, right? So, what I really need to do is dig this out. All the way. Come on. There we go. <laughs> Nothing. It won't ever break. All right, so as far as containing water inside of airflow tiles, it looks like it's very possible to pretty much do... <laughs> put as much water as you want inside of it. Just to kind of make the point here. Ooh, let's see if I can do it without crashing the game. Oh my! I might have done it. <laughs> oh, no, maybe? Uh-oh, I don't think so. Look at all this water. Look at how much there is. Wow! Okay, so maybe, maybe you have a base that runs for millions of cycles, potentially. And you somehow happen to get your hands on a nearly unlimited amount of copper ore. And you decide that you need a water tank that is nearly the size of the ocean. Well, just out of curiosity. Let's see. Can you fill it? Entirely with water. Uh, yep. Looks like you can. <laughs> Alright, so as far as JSON 2201's comment right there, absolutely right. Using airflow tiles is the way to get uh, essentially a nearly unlimited amount of water capacity. I mean, just for the sake of it. What if we take this mass and we make it like a, a million kilograms? We overpressurize water. Just, I don't even know how you would do this in the game, but maybe you do. So now, look at the liquid of pressure inside of here. It's mysterious. It doesn't even know what to do. Is it breaking the tiles? No. There's a, a nearly uncalculable amount of liquid up there. <laughs> look at how much there is! Nothing. Not even going to break a little bit. Until you destroy it. And then it comes out like a geyser. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Madness, I tell you what. Look at that. We just successfully made a geyser inside of uh, oxygen not included. That should be a new hazard that they add to biomes very pressurized liquids. That should that should be how they do lava, actually. If you accidentally tap into it, it sprouts up like that and blows up your base. So the last thing we need to test here is what happens if we increase the tiles around this? Do we increase the capacity? Well, since I know obsidian, I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. And the answer is yes, I've seen a lot of people making tiles that are, are, or shall we say, tanks that have many layer. I can guarantee this is going to have some sort of effect, but let's just see how much effect it has. So we know obsidian can hold 11 tiles of water. So if I paint this in up to 11, so yes, painting this up to 11 here, obviously it worked out just fine. What about to 12? We'll bring it up a little bit. The question that I want to see here is does it double or do we only get a portion of that back? There we go, I'm doubled up. So that is at 22. Oh, and it's just starting to break. All right, so there are my results for this experiment. I think this has been really clear and quite logical and easy to follow. So if we take a look at just the rocks, uh, we can see here that just with one wall, more or less, uh, you can see that your best materials are obviously obsidian, igneous rock, granite, and abyssalite. Don't use sedimentary rock, don't use sandstone, unless they're going to be really small containers. Uh, pretty much just don't ever use sedimentary rock. If you do, you're going to have to use multiple walls. And you can see here that you're, you're going to double up the amount of water you're going to be able to contain, minus one tile, when you go to two walls. I'm guessing you'd have the same sort of results if we went to three. But honestly, if you're using any of these right here, 
in the top three, those are going to be like some enormous tanks. Plus the fact that you can make it as wide as you want. So that's uh, the real takeaway there. Uh, is that using the right material is going to allow you to get a very, very large water tank. So you shouldn't worry about that breaking. And we should be able to get away from these bases that have like five walls that are surrounding some water. But just because you, you know, use the right material and then don't really worry about it because this experiment right here is nice and straightforward. And I think the results are nice and clear. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you guys found this video somewhat informative or helpful. Let me know down there in the comment section below. And if I've earned your subscription, then thank you so much for that. Have a great day, guys. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out.